This is the third video in my series on the most commonly misused GRE words. The list itself comes from CrunchPrep and the link is in the description. And the reason I think this is such an important video series is because it's great for those not only who are studying the GRE, but anyone who wants to improve their English. At the same time as learning new words, you can avoid the common mistakes that people make in terms of getting confused between two words. For example, the very first pair on the screen, climactic versus climatic. Could you honestly say that you knew the difference between those two words? You might individually know one of the words, but do you know the difference between those two words? And do you know both the words? This is the kind of pair that this video series is all about. Now, I have not pre-prepped going through the entire list and learning them myself. I want you to see how many pairs I know I'm not going to pretend I know more words than I do know. And the other benefit of doing this is that you can see my day-to-day -day definitions and compare them against the definitions that they give. So let's get to that first pair. I did know that myself. Climactic is anything to do with a climax, a peak, an intense period. The climax of a movie, you could say, is climactic. It reaches a peak. That's when all the action and twists and turns happen. Anything to do with a peak, a climax, an intense period is climactic. You could say the climactic conclusion to the season-long feud, for example. Climatic, without the C, is to do with the climate, something completely different. And remember, the climate isn't just the day-to-day -day weather, it's a long-term trend in the environment, like climate change, yearly temperatures, that kind of thing, not just the day-to-day -day weather. That's the climate, and the word here is climatic. Let's see their example sentences. The first one for climactic is very similar to my one. The film's climactic chasing scene won many accolades from the critics. And then their sentence for climatic is sudden climatic changes, they're talking about the climate and the long-term weather patterns, have resulted in widespread influenza all over the country. So the difference comes down to that letter C after the A. What about the next one? Complacent versus complacent. I actually don't know the difference here. I know totally what complacent means with a C. I've always seen that word complacent with the S and I just don't know what it means. I could guess, but I really don't know. So here's an example where I not only don't know the difference, I don't even know one of the words at all. So let's look. I knew that complacent meant self-satisfied, as they say, someone who believes their situation is good enough and they don't need to change. Because he was so far ahead of second place, he became complacent. You could think of it as linking to the word place in the middle there. They're comfortable in their place, so they don't feel any need to change. With a hint of arrogance, by the way. It's not a compliment. It's not saying you're satisfied. It's saying you're a little bit arrogant in your position and you might be due for a fall. Now, the example sentence is, one should not be complacent in life, no matter how many riches, strong positions or accolades they possess. But what is complacent? It means willing to please. I didn't know that. I guess plays in the middle looks a bit like please. So that's one way I can remember that. Willing to please. The complacent, I'm probably not even pronouncing that right, acquit, lost all hope in getting reduced sentence from the judge. So this person was trying to please the judge. They were complacent. Okay, probably look up how to pronounce that. I honestly don't know. But the clue that I'm going to use to remember this word is in the middle, it looks a bit like the word please, plays. So someone who is complacent is someone who's trying to please others. Okay, I think I've got that now. So I'm learning here too. Next one, conscience versus conscious. Your conscience is like your moral conscience your sense of right and wrong. But being conscious is like being awake. Or unconscious is someone who's knocked out and on the floor, not just sleeping, completely knocked out. Some people debate about whether AI or machines will ever be conscious, awake and knowing what's happening. Or whether they will have a conscience, a sense of right and wrong, ethics, morals. Big difference. One's about being awake and alert and alive versus being unconscious. And the other one's about ethics, morals, having a sense of right and wrong. And that's what they agree with here. And you can see the two example sentences. 
that use those definitions. It's quite a clear distinction to me, even though the words look very similar. Okay, what about diffuse versus diffuse? To diffuse something is to remove the fuse, to stop something from blowing up. That could literally be like a bomb that you diffuse and it doesn't go off. But also you can diffuse a tense situation. It's more often now used literarily. So there was an argument brewing, but she came in and diffused the situation. Removed the fuse so things didn't explode. Calmed everyone down. Diffuse means spread out. They mingled with the population and became diffuse. Spread out to the point where you can't even distinguish them. She should have concentrated her efforts and not been so diffuse. Scattered, spread out. Okay, let's see their example sentences. The teacher finally managed to diffuse the two coral ink kits. Exactly. The different colors of ink diffused into the water in a beautiful pattern. It's a lovely example. Spread out, became scattered, far apart from each other. Quite a clear distinction there, even though the words sound very similar, they don't look so similar. Dessert versus dessert. Very commonly confused. You just have to remember one thing. The double S means you're gonna eat it. It's a dessert, ice cream, cheesecake, apple crumble, my favorite. Dessert with one S, you can think like the S's have dried out. There's only one S now. There used to be two S's with dessert. So it's something that is lovely to sup on with the S's. When the S's dry out and you just have one S, you get a dry region, a dessert. That's one way, for example, you could remember it. Loads of S's, there's lots to eat. One S just dried out desert, a desert landscape with camels and cactuses and stuff like that. Very commonly confused and also pronounced differently and also commonly mispronounced. The Sahara Desert versus an ice cream dessert. Dessert, you eat. Desert, you walk through with a camel. Big difference there. Okay, I see people make this mistake all the time. Even journalists and presenters make this mistake all the time. So if you can understand the difference between disinterested and uninterested, you're ahead of, I would say, 99% of English speakers. So this is a good opportunity here. Disinterested means you don't have an interest one way or another. You are not biased. You are fair. You are impartial. It doesn't mean you're not interested, you don't care. It means you're not biased. You don't have a vested interest in one group or another group. You're impartial, you're fair. Whereas uninterested means without interest. So you don't have any care at all in the situation. It's not about being biased or not. It's literally you don't give a crap. Uninterested, without any interest. Whereas disinterested is a different kind of interest that you don't have. It's interest in the sense of meaning bias. So disinterested means non-biased, whereas uninterested, we're talking about the engaging type of interest. So I'm uninterested, I don't care, I'm bored, whatever, I don't mind what happens. Big difference. You could think of disinterested as being almost a compliment. The person is impartial, fair, not biased, whereas uninterested is usually an insult. He was just totally uninterested in that movie and just yawned the whole time. 99% of people get this wrong, so you can be among the 1% who get it right. I think their example here, by the way, is not the best one, because in their definition, they agree with what I'm saying, and that is correct about being impartial, unbiased, and this sentence doesn't really show that. I would prefer a sentence like, we need to appoint a disinterested arbiter to decide the case. And that would mean, again, unbiased toward one side or another. I think that showcases the word disinterested better than this one. Whereas here, a bunch of uninterested students, they didn't care. Amazing distinction. And I really hope I have helped clarify that for you. Please do leave a like or a comment to show that. Okay, insure versus insure. I feel like this might have cropped up earlier in the list, but uh, maybe not. Insure means to make sure something happens. You're guaranteeing it's going to happen. Not verbally, you're actually taking actions to make something certain. He ensured his success by destroying his competitors. He's done something to make it happen. And that's different to a word we saw earlier in the list, I'm pretty sure was assure, 
with AWS URE, which means just to verbally guarantee something, where you're not actually doing any actions, you're just verbally saying that something's gonna happen. That's assurance. Whereas ensure with an E, is you're actually taking actions to make something happen. Insure with an I is totally different. It's like insurance. It's a backup plan. Like you insure your car so that if it's in a crash, you get some money back. It's a system where you have a backup if something goes wrong, that's to insure. But as I say, I think I've covered similar words earlier on in the list. Envelop versus envelope. They look similar, but pronounced differently. To envelop is to surround and engulf something, to swarm it and overwhelm it. The clouds enveloped the sun, or she was besieged, completely enveloped by the enemy. Whereas an envelope is simply that thing that you put letters in with a stamp and you put it in the post. It's an envelope. You lick the edge and you seal it and then you have an envelope. How have they clarified it? The atmosphere envelops the earth, surrounds it in every direction. Whereas an envelope is of course something that you receive in the mail, usually containing a letter. She received the envelope that had her offer letter. Envelop particularly is a great word to know for the GRE. Very similar to engulf. Anything that means being swarmed by, overwhelmed by, covered by, to be enveloped by something, engulfed by something. Flaunt versus flout. To flaunt something is to show it off, whereas to flout something is to break the rules. She flaunted her new car, he flouted the rules by not turning up to his court appearance. Flaunt, you're almost taunting and showing off. Flout, you're being a lout. Look at those last four words, you're being a lout. You're breaking the rules like a lout, like a thug or a vagabond. You're a lout and you're flouting the rules, breaking the rules. Whereas flaunt, you're showing something off, you're taunting. You're boasting, you're brandishing. She flaunted her new car, that's just what I'm saying. I literally, I'm not looking at these examples, I'm just making them up. A similar, what do they say? Despite repeated warnings, the duo continued to flout the court's orders, break the rules, not follow them. Great pair of words to know there, wonderful. And finally, flounder versus founder. I know flounder means to struggle. She floundered in the water as the waves overcame her, or he floundered as the pressure got to him. To founder. Obviously I know what to found a company is to start a company and that person is a founder. But I'm guessing they need another definition to founder. I'm not actually sure about any other definitions of founder. So this last pair, I'm not quite sure. I know flounder it says flounder is a verb to falter, to struggle, to make mistakes. Often it does relate to water, by the way. He was floundering around in the swimming pool. But it can mean any time you're beginning to make mistakes, you're fumbling, struggling, to founder, what do they say? To sink, break down, or fail. Yes, that's an old fashioned word. It's coming back to me now. Where the ship foundered against the rocks. Her career foundered, broke down, sunk when she was caught taking a bribe. That's really worth clarifying. And it shows that even me with the 340 and what I think is a great vocabulary, English degree, there's still so much I can learn about the English language. And I did, in the distant reaches of my mind, know that founder meant something to do with ships going against rocks. But I'm much more clear now. To founder isn't just the noun, like the founder of a company. It also means to break down or fail. The ship foundered against the rocks. Her career foundered when she was caught taking a bribe. And that is a wonderful pair to end this third video in this series on. I really hope you've learned a new word or at least clarified a few word definitions. As always, it was my pleasure to make this video and I do hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one.